Hello everyone, welcome along to the Rangers Ravel Women's Show. My name's Brian. Tonight I am joined as usual by Wolf, Laura and Carr. How are we doing, folks? Very good. I mean, tremendous, yeah. <laughs> Yeah, I've had, I've had worse Mondays, yeah. Uh, yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So, of course, we're reacting to yesterday's uh, League Cup final win, Rangers 4, Partick Thistle 1. It's a funny subject to start with, Wolf, but um, yeah, Hearts didn't take too kindly to Rangers decorating the Tyne Castle uh, uh, dressing room with Rangers colours. I just think it's something we need to touch on so people don't think we're trying to avoid it. For, for a start, it's something that Rangers do in, in every changing room they go into, both men's and women's team. And there's lots and lots of clubs do the same. I mean, you very rarely see inside dressing rooms, but it happens at dressing rooms all over all over the place. Okay, it's unusual for you to be in the home team dressing room at a different at a different stadium, I get that. But it's what we do. They did it in December 2022 at, this, at the League Cup final last season. Nobody batted their island about it. You know, for Hearts to come out with an official statement saying that Rangers defaced their crest. So I'm assuming by defacing it means we've damaged it. How you can damage it with a rug, I don't know. And I'm assuming they'll be sending us a bill to fix the bit that they defaced, right? Just like I've defaced my canvas behind me with a Rangers Women's Supporters Group uh, scarf today, just to show how easy it is to deface something. Um, the other thing that I think is absolutely hilarious, right? It's disrespectful to their crest, right? And this is the last thing I'm going to say on it, right? Because I really want to do talk about the game. That there's a Heart of Midlothian crest outside St Giles Cathedral on the Royal Mile that the Heart supporters think it's good luck if you walk past it, you spit on it. Right? That's what they do. I've seen them do it. Right? So you're supposed to spit on this in for good luck. If that's a superstition, that's great. Right? But we're not allowed to cover their crest with a rug. It's hilarious. So we can just assume that that will be the last League Cup final that we have to attend at Tynecastle because they will obviously refuse to host it in future. I would imagine. Anyway. Great day yesterday. Fabulous win for the girls. Tremendous. Yeah. And Laura, as Aldo has just said, we did that. We did it in 2022. Uh, why was it not all right in 2024? That's a very good question, which I don't really have to answer. It seems to just be those that want to be offended will find anything to be offended by, and they wanted to be offended by it yesterday, so they did. And, it's a shame because it was such a good final, much better than the final in 2022, when maybe if they brought it up then, it would have kind of brought some more drama and the atmosphere to the game. But it was like such a good final. Partick done really well in that yesterday. The atmosphere was great, record crowds, and then we're just talking about a logo over the top of another logo. It's just, it is, it's pathetic. And it's just the, the part of Sorry, it's just the fact that Hearts felt necessary to put out an official statement. You know what I mean? Which they didn't do when a block Lopner was thrown at their captain in a derby with Hibs. They didn't put out an official statement to condemn that. So, anyway, can we just talk about football, please? Yeah. Uh, I'll obviously, Carr, I want to get your thoughts on it as well. I mean, I think it just shows how far the women's game has grown since last season, that there's more people looking at what happened yesterday at the final and they noticed that and they were so up in arms about it. You know, 2022, clearly not that many folk were looking at it that they didn't notice that. <clears throat> it just means more more eyes are on it. So I think it's probably a good thing, but I think they need to just wise up a bit because that's that. Don't host your, don't let out your stadium for a cup final and then be mad when the home team, we were drawn as the home team, puts our logo on it because we're not going to be dancing about hearts and melodian badge when we're celebrating a cup win, are we? It's just, it's daft, it's stupid. I don't get it. Yeah, absolutely. And yeah, it kind of, you woke up this, or was it was it yesterday they released it, or was it this mm. morning? Yeah, it, was, it was last night they released it, yeah. Last yeah. night, yeah. So, last night they put out a statement, yeah. Yeah, so I mean, it's it's a bit... I have to say, though, in the defence of the honest. decent house support, most of them have been absolutely horrified that the club made a statement about it. Yeah, you know I, mean? I could imagine because I'd be quite horrified if we did that. As you say, Car, if you're going to let out your 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 uh, stadium, it's going to be quite normal for the team that's in the certain dressing room to deck out their colours. So yeah, it's pretty poor, pretty poor. But anyway, let's talk about the win. Of course, Rangers won four one against Park Thistle, the team that yesterday Brian, you was. Get this, you should have put out a spoiler alert in case people were coming into this unaware of what happened yesterday. 
You've just, <laughs> you've just ruined it. That's it. Pod's finished. Good night. <laughs> well, there we go. Uh, the starter lineup yesterday was Essen and Goal with Doherty, Hill, and Middick as the back line. Uh, Hay, Rowe, Hardy, and uh, Macaulay, and Cornet, McLaughlin, and Jane Ross. Uh, it was pretty much the team you expected, Laura, wasn't it? Yeah, I think it was the strongest team we could have put out for uh, who was available. So uh, it was good to see Mia obviously start, and she's in really good form for us. But uh, when she starts, the good things usually happen. Obviously, that getting keep my place in goals as the cup keeper was really good. Didn't have too much to do, but obviously she did concede, but. She done quite a good job. The back, Kathy coming back in again after her kind of wee knock that she had was good. She kind of showed up the back again, and I, it was just a really strong team and one that you would kind of expect to see. Obviously, we've got a few still out injured, ready to come back, but it's definitely the strongest we could have put out yesterday. Yeah, as as Laura said in their car, I mean, you had the likes of a, you know. Kirsty Howitt was back on the bench like she was last week. Uh, Sarah Ewan's dropped to the bench. Uh, Lisa Martinez. So it was, it was, is it was the strongest that we could put out, wasn't it? Yeah, it's exactly what I wanted. I wanted me and Brogan to start in the wings. I knew Vic would probably keep her place being the cup keeper, as Laura said. Jane and Rio up top. You know, is gonna you know get something from both of them. It's probably exactly what we needed to go in. You know, Joe took it seriously and didn't think we were playing a lower league, lower league, lower down the league opposition. We'll just put any team out. It'll be fine. She went full force, and it's exactly what we needed because they gave us a good game. So couldn't ask for much more. And that's the team bar when Kirsty McLean and Rachel McLaughlin come back. Which even now I'm not sure if Rachel McLaughlin walks back into that team, by the way, with the way that Cathy and Nick and Tess have been playing. But as soon as, you know, Innie's back, you don't know if she'll slot back in as well. But it's it's exactly the team that I wanted. I was I was very happy with it. Yeah, well, it was it was the the wood that I was most sort of wanting. Um I, I felt if Mia and uh, Brogan started and you know big bigger pitch that Tyne Castle is um they could get some joy down the wings, and that's exactly what happened, wasn't it? Yeah, they had, I mean, it was, it was a no-brainer that they started because we had to use the width of the pitch. We said that last week, that the big, wide-open spaces of Tyne Castle would do us um, would do us a lot of favours. Um, possibly not as early as it did. I mean, I, th I thought maybe, you know, Thistle would tire, as they did after an hour. I thought them and might have got in behind them, but, I mean, the, the job was done before then. But, I mean, I mean, Mia was was, was ripping their full-back a new one. I mean, the, the, full, the full-back, to her credit, you know, Stopped her a couple of times, but me, I just, I mean, I had a, I had a Patrick Thistle fan sitting behind me, and he was, he was waxing lyrical about her, saying how good she was, you know. I mean, that when, when she, when she not made the, when she not made the last year run, run out of the box, that was just, I mean, I'm sitting there and look, there's a seat beside me, put her up here, you know. What I mean, somebody mm -hmm. gave her a ticket to get back in, it was just brilliant. Me, I was just, just absolutely tremendous, you know. What I mean, just, I mean, and I know we'll get on to the, the goals and the, the, and the goal she scored was, was top draw as well, but yeah, we had to. We had to start with width. We really did, and I had to start with, with, with width because you, you could you could argue you could possibly start with um, well Lizzie Arnott way out wide, but she's not got the pace to bother them too much, you know the way she used to have. So I think starting with, with me and Brogan um, on each wing just it was the right thing to do, and it, it certainly paid dividends. Absolutely. Oh, hold on a sec. Uh, and I'm trying to bring it up. Where are we? Uh, Alison, yeah, first my first live game, loved it. The only thing was I was beside the Thistle fans. Really great atmosphere. Nice to see you got along, Alison, and you enjoyed it. What did you make of the atmosphere yesterday, Laura? Because I was quite... We, the, the, the Thistle fans certainly made made their sort of presence known, didn't they? Yeah, they definitely did. And I think it made for a good atmosphere. I think, obviously, there was... Rangers fans had a bit of atmosphere as well, but I think Partick definitely created more of an atmosphere than the Rangers fans, to be honest. But they were, it's such a big occasion for them. It's, obviously, it was, it was for us as well, but they, you don't know when they're going to get to another final, whereas it's probably more than likely that we'll be getting to another one fairly soon. But it was really good. I think 
the one thing as much as we're talking about Tyne Castle and how they might not have it again, the way the um, stands are, it kind of get throws that atmosphere onto the pitch. And I think the players in that were feeding off that and like pretty much all of them, Partick and Rangers players were saying how much they kind of fed off the atmosphere and how good it was and obviously a record attendance um, for the cup final as well. So that was really good as well. And I think it was pretty much evenly split. They had brought a few bus loads of fans. We obviously had a few buses and that. So no, it was a really good atmosphere, really good day. And Alison can come back if that's her first, <laughs> first game and first win. No bad start. Yeah, absolutely. And just to note, the official attendance was 4,786. A new record for the cup, the League Cup final. So that was also good. Wasn't a great start, Carr, was it? There was a couple of occasions where we sort of got ourselves in a bit of a muddle and almost, you know, almost conceded possession in our own box. And, you know, we were, we, we kind of gave Thistle some encouragement, didn't we, quite early on? Yeah, we didn't start the greatest. We kind of said that, that we looked a little bit kind of off it. The passes weren't great. They were cutting out a lot of the thing. And then Thistle had a shot that, you know, Vic doesn't get to, but thankfully Olivia McLaughlin's there to clear it nearly off the line, which, you know, could have gone the other way and then, you know, we're behind. But we just didn't start great. I don't know what it was, whether it was the occasion or whether, the, you know, the result from last week who were still maybe hanging on their minds a little bit and they just didn't start 100%. And then, you know, obviously the game goes on and we grow into it and we do play how we normally play. But it's just one of those things. We've not been starting a lot of games the greatest recently, so it's just a kind of a continuation of that, I think. Yeah, definitely. Uh, and Wolf, the, the the player that everybody wanted to start, Mia, did the damage, the first, dealt the first sort of blow for Park Thistle. Uh, a long ball through from Cathy Hill. Um, Mia latched onto it and dispatched it. No problems. 1-0. Yeah, you could, you could possibly argue it was slightly against the run of play because, as you say, Thistle had probably mm -hmm. the, better, the better of the start. Thistle were always going to start fast because... As I touched on at the start, you know they, they were always going to run out of legs. Them being part time against us full time, so they they would obviously be trying to get an early lead to maybe have something to sit on, you know. Because if they if they have to chase the game from early as as they did, then it's going to tire them even more. But I mean, yeah, I mean, me as well. Great ball from Kathy, absolutely tremendous. But I didn't realise how good a ball it was. I watched it back; just a fantastic ball. Um, I know that I know their their goalkeepers have been getting a lot of stick. Um, where is it? Here we uh, Somebody put it on here. There we go. Um, from from Aldo, the abuse of young Thistle keepers receiving is disgusting. And it really is. I mean, she's only, what, 17 years old, uh, on loan from Glasgow City, you know. And apart from making an error at the first goal, I thought she did a really good game. I mean, she, she there's nothing she could do with any of the goals. I mean, Mia's finish would have, would have beaten a lot more experienced keepers than her. The only mistake she made was... For me, when she came out, she should have kept coming. Mm -hmm. Because I'm a great advocate. If a keeper commits himself, they have to keep going. Because if you stop, you're going to get caught. I mean, we, got, we, we got caught, I think, was it against Celtic? We got caught when mm -hmm. when uh, Jenna came out, stopped, and then came out again. And, you know, you, you lose goal. If you're, go, if, you're going to, if you're a goalkeeper, you're going to come out. And I've never played in goal. But for me, if you're going to come out, you, you've got to, you, look, you look ridiculous if you don't. Having said that, it's a hell of a finish for me. Because if she catches it wrong, it could go... High, wide, and not very handsome. I mean, Rio had one arguably easier later on in a half that she put by the post. So for for me, finishing it in her first major final in her first year as a professional, as she went as she went to, at great pains after the game to emphasise, great finish, great start, and unfortunately we couldn't hold out the lead for too long. Yeah, Laura, it was uh, Thistle came back with her own sort of long range effort, um, catching catching the defence out and the goalie out and. <laughs> really good finish. You couldn't sort of argue with it, could you? No, I think if you're going to get to a final and be up against it against a team like us, then that's the kind of goal you want to score to give your fans something to cheer about because it was a stunning goal. I think Tess should go nearer Rachel Donaldson to kind of close her in a bit. She had far, far too much space, but saying that the hit, she hits it so sweetly and it just goes top, top bins. <laughs> Right in at the top corner and fantastic finish, but thankfully it didn't spoil their party too much. It gave them their constellation goal and then we kicked on and put them in bed. 
Yep, absolutely. And the person that stepped up, Carl, Rachel Rowe. Short corner. I'm never a fan of short corners, but this one paid off. Um, played into, I think it was Brogan, I think it was, or mm -hmm. a, I think, I can't remember. I think it was Brogan or Olivia, and they fed it back to Rachel just inside the box and a, a tremendous finish that would have, you know, that was a, a, a really, really good finish. Yeah, I mean, Rachel Rowe takes the corner, gives it to Brogan. Brogan sees she's ran into space. She feeds the ball back to her. She just takes one touch, turns, and it's the curl of it and hit the underside of the bar and in. I mean, it's a wonder strike. She doesn't do tappings as Rachel Rowe. She scores bangers all the time. She's just that good. But I think she said in her post match, one of them, I don't know, she did about six. One of them, she said... <laughs> They, they'd worked on that in the training pitch and she said, I hope Brogan's going to give me that pass because I'm in space here. So they've obviously worked on that before and it you know, paid off today, but just a hell of a strike. You couldn't ask for much better in a cup final. And then she's noising up, I don't know, their fans, their players, I don't know what she's doing. She's cutting her ears and then body sliding across the grass and everybody's you know, jumping on top of her. Just what a moment for her, for that to be her first cup final, which I didn't know. Until after the game, it was Laura or Alan or somebody said to me that was her first cup final, which is mad considering, you know, how long she's been in the game, the level, you know, that she has played at is incredible. But, you know, I think she definitely got the bug being with us now, cup final, first cup final, you win it and everybody loves you. What more could you ask for? Most definitely. And uh, right on the stroke of halftime, Wolf, uh, Rio Hardy made it 3-1. I think she, she's kind of fought off a couple of defenders and, uh, poked it in the the bottom corner. Um, it kind of gave Rangers the sort of the com the sort of comfort of the two goal lead, and it also sort of deflated Park like Thistle at the same time, didn't it? Yeah, if I can just go back to the second goal a minute, Brian. And mm -hmm. uh, first of all, I owe everybody that saw my halftime thing on on X an apology. I said it was a second phase of a corner because I couldn't quite understand how Rachel got the ball back because. You know, I hadn't kind of been paying that much attention because it's a short corner and I'm not a fan of them myself, but it was it was a brilliant move. And again, having watched the highlights back, we tried it, we tried it from the other side about 10 minutes earlier. If you watch back the highlights, it shows you a corner that we took from the other side, and it was a short ball into the box, but this but the second or third pass didn't happen. So I'm assuming that was the same move from the other side that just didn't work. And then Rachel, why she's in so much space, I've got no idea. But I mean sublime for absolutely superb, sensational finish. For the second goal, so yeah, I I owe everybody that saw my my half time Twitter thing an apology because somebody did pick me up on it, and I wasn't getting into a discussion about it. I just let it go, but I, I didn't I did make a slight slight error error in my my judgment on that one. But the, the third goal, as you say, Rio, um, just do what Rio does. She got the ball and there was nobody taking it off her. She knocked a couple of them out of the way and slid it under the keeper. I mean, that makes it sound like a very basic goal, but it was still a really really good goal. She had an awful lot to do when she got the ball. And she just she just barreled into the box and went, no, I'm having this. And as you say, right on the stroke at half time, it was in stoppage time, which had been added because obviously me had gone down with an injury. I think she she landed badly on her wrist, it looked like. And um, so a couple of minutes added because of that. And that third goal just finished it. That was that was the game done as a contest. Um, which was fairly evident when Thistle came out and just basically sat in because it was noticeable early second half day when Thistle attacked, they had one attacker against their three defenders almost the entire second half. So I think it was a case of they were knackered. They didn't want to get absolutely slaughtered, which would have done them no good. It would have done the game no good because it doesn't look good if you if there's a, a cricket score in a cup final doesn't look good. Um, so yeah, the, the third goal right on half time basically just killed the game. Stone dead. Certainly did. It certainly did. And Laura, it made Joe's sort of team talk a little bit easier at half time in the sense that they got that two goal cushion and I think the sort of the way, as, as Wolf says, the way the second half went, certainly um, you could see there was a difference in this, the sense that they were Rangers were more into controlling the game and keeping possession rather than pushing forward and trying to make things, you know, like when they were, if they were nil nil or when they were at one one, you could see the difference in their play, couldn't you? Yeah, I think the pace of the game really slowed down between them being absolutely knackered and we were obviously just in total control. I think Brian Graham with the said that they kind of knew that they were kind of done, so they went to kind of a back five just to kind of soak up the pressure and save us making it kind of a cricket score. And I think we probably kind of acknowledged that as well, that you don't want to look to, it to look embarrassing when it's like a cup final and 
they've done that well to get there. But we obviously did go on to get another goal, but it was obviously they did really well to kind of soak up that pressure because they must have been absolutely exhausted by the end of it with the amount of play that we were even having it like around their box, getting balls into the box and that, but I was that's what it is. Absolutely. And then Car a uh, one of the one of the more consistent players on the day, Olivia McLaughlin popped up with a with the fourth and ultimately the killer goal. Um a tidy finish in the sense that um they worked it well and then Olivia just spun and First time shot into the into the sort of high end of the net. Yeah, I mean, Jane did a lot of the the hard work to begin with. It's a Jane kind of shot, and then it gets back out to Brogan, who just gives it to Liv, and she just has to t- kind of touch it, and it goes up over the keeper. And you can see how happy she was to get a goal in the cup final. But I think on the bus back, we were talking about it's only our second goal for us, which I couldn't believe, but I believe it is only our second goal for us, which is crazy. But it's just what she offers us. She's just that good. But obviously, there were subs before that. You know, there was, I don't know if we want to go back and talk about the subs because obviously, mm-hmm. like, some major changes happened there. Christian Howitt came back on, having been out for such a length of time. Ailey Austin came on, which is, you know, a massive moment for her. Uh, Libby Bance came on. Sarah Younes. Sarah Younes. <laughs> the front two changed. Love and then that. Chelsea came off. Lizzie came on. You can read them out if you want, but some changes. Of, the, the main ones, Kirsten Howitt's back from injury, um, back on the pitch. Thought she might get a goal, but she didn't quite, you know, get there. She had a few chances that went kind of high and wide, but we'll, we'll forgive her for that. But a uh, great goal from Liv, and I, I, she can stay forever. That'd be great. She won't. I know she won't, but if she could, another season loan, we wouldn't be mad about it, I'm sure. Mia, Jane and Rio came off and Lizzie, Sarah and Kirsty Howard came on. That was the triple oh, substitute. Not far away. <laughs> and then both the rest of the game became much of a, a, a training sort of game, didn't it? The Rangers knew they were never going to lose it. Part kind of knew they weren't going to win it. And it just became a, a game of keep the ball and, you know, not pick up no more injuries, basically. I think the expression you're looking for is that we, we saw the game out very professionally. Yes. Because at the end of the day, we could we could have chased we could have chased goal after goal after goal and probably got them because we did miss some chances. But we've got mm. a big big schedule coming up, very very important games. We're a point clear at the top of the league. Uh, as somebody just pointed out to Sid, who's over in Toronto. Good evening, Sid, or good morning, or whatever you've got. That would be, would be morning for you, Sid, wouldn't it? Yeah, or afternoon, or whatever it is. Anyway, <laughs> uh, so Sid Sid was asking. He's obviously you know. A wee bit out of touch over there, but he was asking if they can still win the league. They very much can. Point clear at the top of the table. And obviously they're very conscious of that. I mean, Joe said in our interview after the game, you know, we realise we've got Hibs round the corner. That's a big, big game. So, you know, let's not risk any injuries. 4-1 four, four up with 20 minutes to go in a cup final. It's, the job's done. The team you're playing are out on their feet. They're not They're not trying to score. I mean, I was wanting Thistle to come forward and try and score some goals. But then we would just have picked them off and scored a lot more, which... Wouldn't have done them any credit, as we said earlier. And they didn't deserve to get hammered because they did well to get to the final and they gave us a game. The support the, the support were really good. I mean, they, they stuck behind them the whole way. Fair mm-hmm. play to them. They stayed at the end as well to see them get their medals and things like that. Which is always nice to see in a cup final. Um, Very professionally saw the, saw the game out. No injuries, that, no more injuries that we're aware of. Game time for players coming back from injury, like Kirsty Howitt. And great to see Ellie Austin get on the park as well. You know, be on the park at full time. Um, and when we get when we do get to the full time whistle, I want to mention the fastest moving player I saw in the entire the entirety of the game. And I don't know if you've noticed it amongst the celebrations. League you thinking about no, that. Carry on. No, no, well, well, when the game finished, I don't know if you noticed as soon as the final whistle went, who the fastest player to move out of the dugout was. Is it Cassie? No. Nope. Oh. I did see something on it, but I can't for the life. Was it Chelsea? I thought it was Chelsea. I don't know. Chelsea. Chelsea, I remember. I could just see the orange boots. She was rapid, right? Or like the Chelsea was. Chelsea was rapid. She was absolutely loving it. Oh, she was was buzzing after. I think it was the fastest everybody moved all day. (laughs) (laughs) So yeah, Laura. Orange boots. I remember. Yeah, absolutely. So of course, as Wolf says, we we seen the game out four one. Um. And the players obviously got their uh, medals, and I think it was a 
a massive game for the manager as well. Joe Porter, that was her first sort of trophy as a manager. Um, it's doesn't matter what trophy you win, the first one's always the biggest one for a manager. Um, and I think she's she obviously was absolutely delighted about it, you know, and the players obviously uh, were obviously playing for her and this a lot of them signed because of her. Yeah, I think she's done incredibly well. She's came in straight away, obviously, one of the first trophy that's kind of on offer. But I think the most important thing she's done is give them that togetherness. They're all like battling for each other. As soon as Joe was getting the trophy, that they, you could see they were all just buzzing for her. She was buzzing for them on social media. She'd put it um, like me and my girls or something like that. So it's just, and I think a lot of the players also spoke about the kind of togetherness that they've got. I think Nick said it's a really special group and it's probably the most together our team's been that she's been part of, considering Nick's been in the game quite a while now. That speaks volumes. So definitely a special group and just hopefully they can go on and obviously lift more tr- silverware this season and the seasons to come. Also, special shout out to Cathy and Tess. Cathy's the 50 appearances from yesterday and then Tess has reached 100 appearances that's came around scarily quick, <laughs> considering it feels like Cathy, well, Cathy and Tess just kind of fight the side yesterday. But, yep, uh, to make her special, the even more special, obviously getting milestone achievements like that is, is fantastic. And they'll probably get their tops at the weekend and photos. And it's good to see. Absolutely. And, Carr, as, as Paul's just asking, the chances of, you know, keeping a player like Ro, um, you know, she's just signed in the summer. It's it's the sort of player that you, you want to hang on to, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, I think as long as Joe is here and as long as we're, you know, playing we are the way we are, as long as we're winning things, I think she's caught the bug. I think she likes it here. I think she likes what Joe and Jay and, you know, the tactics and the way they're playing and what, the freedom she's been allowed to have, I think. You know, that, that excites her. She said that herself, you know, she's excited by what Joe's built here. So I think she'll stay for a wee while, hopefully, unless a big WSL team or someone abroad maybe comes in for her. But I think she'd like to stay, you know, if she gets the opportunity to. And I'm hoping that we've already got a few contracts in the works ready for the summer. Just hand them round to everyone, get them all to sign it while they're all buzzing from winning everything. And we'll just go into next season, you know, maybe a few additions from Joe's scrapbook and numbers that she's got connections wise. And we'll just go into next season even stronger. But Rachel Rowe and Rio are ones that I really, really want us to keep. And obviously me and the younger ones, but they're already, you know, had signed extensions. So we've got them for a bit longer. But those two especially are the ones that I really want to keep because what they brought to this team, it's incredible. Absolutely. And Wolf, um, obviously pre-match, the, there was the meet and greet and... Uh, obviously, Kirsty McLean was the, the the player nominated for that. She was still in a neck a knee brace. So, um, although she was walking unaided, as as in no crutches, um, it's she, she's saying she's going to come back. Hopefully, it's very soon. But I would imagine it'll be a next season before we see her. There, you think? Maybe, maybe she. Maybe, I don't know. Poss- possibly get a cameo appearance off her towards the end of the season. Um, it would be nice if we could get her back in time for the Scottish Cup final, assuming that we get there. Or at least have her on the bench. She would at least deserve that. Um, but yeah, I mean, she. We were talking about it yesterday. She, I don't think talking about talking about any. She do, she doesn't realise just what a superstar she's going to be because she's so she's so quiet, so unassuming. She seemed almost embarrassed to be the player nominated to do that yesterday. And I when I didn't see her in the club shop, I saw her in the reception before. Before she went in, I, I kind of beat the crowds, and I think I actually took her away from speaking to her grandparents, which I apologise for. Um, I was nice, I was nice about it. I was nice about it. Um, but yeah, she, you know, she, she seems very, very quiet, and I don't think she realises just, just how good she is, you know. Despite the fact that people probably tell her all the time, you know. But yeah, hopefully we'll see her back before the end of the season. But as long as she's going to stay, there's no need to rush her back, you know. If she's not going to stay, we might need her for the cup final. But if you know what I mean, we, we can't really rush. Hopefully, she looks at the sort of things that's happened to likes a likes Emma who went away and unfortunately did a cruise it very very early. You know, the grass isn't always greener. I don't know that can happen anywhere. You know, but hopefully she stays at least another season. Maybe she feels she owes it after the injury she's had this year and she's still only young. Again, 
you know, as we were just as we were just seeing about, about Rachel, if a, if a ridiculous offer comes in, she can't turn that down. Mm-hmm. You know, she, she could do it. She could do a cruciate first day of preseason. So, if a, if a a big uh, English team comes in for a big a continental team comes in for her and she fancies it, and the money's right, she has to go because she can't stand in her way because it is a short career. You know, but hopefully she's she's still around. Hopefully we can get her back for the end of the season and. It helps us get this treble that we're all really, really hoping we get. Um, because as um, somebody somebody said in the comments, just going through there, is, uh, is Scottish football ready for Rangers getting a double treble? Laura, I think because that it, would end Scottish football, wouldn't it? Yeah, I think we're all <laughs> <safe> for <laughs> If that's the way it ends, then so be it. <laughs> <laughs> it certainly be, we'd certainly go out by a bang, wouldn't we? 100%. Well, Brian, if, put, if putting a rug if putting a rug over a crest causes that much commotion, why is what a double treble is going to do? Well, that's, uh, that was my next point. Yeah, absolutely. Um, don't know if you've seen this, uh, Lauren Carn Wolf. Uh, I don't know if you guys seen it, but Bennett was having a long chat with Joe after the game. Did you see that? I, I did see him on the pitch. I didn't see, and obviously speaking to the manager. I see that they showed it on Sky Sports because, of course, I watched all the celebrations again before we came on. <laughs> and I did see that the camera was on them for quite a while and they seemed like they were having a very good chat. So hopefully it was Joe telling them who to sign up for next season already and the contracts will be in the, the, getting the ink dried before the kind of season it. Absolutely. And, Car, as you say, maybe maybe you, what you said earlier uh, is rubbing off and Joe was telling... John Bennett exactly what, what she was wanting for next season. I mean, I can fully imagine it. After the last few games, I remember the Hibs game, well, both the Hibs games, actually. Donald was there. I can't, is it Gillies? Donald Gillies? Giles? Gillies? I don't know. Gillies, Gillies, uh, Gillies. He was there, and then he was there, obviously, yesterday, and he came over to us, and I noticed that him and Joe were having quite a you know, deep conversation, as they have been after the last few games. So I think it really is like the whole board maybe not all of them but like the main you know players there are all in communication with each other with joe and bennett and donald all being like right but we really need to like cement this now we need to focus on this and i think joe's the type of person that she'll tell them what she needs and it's not going to be a question it's going to be a this is what i need find a way to give me it or you know i'll figure it out myself kind of thing because that's that's the impression that she gives me which is good to have rather than just a manager that will just do whatever the board wants and it's not that big a deal she really has set in stone what the players are going to do and i think that's kind of rubbed off the whole way up that they really do want this to happen but on the point of a double treble i don't think the city's big enough i don't think it's ready for two bus tours of everybody going round because I just I, don't, I think it'd be pandemonium, but bring it on if that's the case because I, I can't wait for it. It's been, you know, since we went pro, we thought, well, after we won the league, that's it, we're going to kick on now. And then obviously last season happened and it didn't. So I think at some point it's going to happen. And for if it happens this season, I mean, it'd be phenomenal if both teams can do it. Brian, on the subject of John Bennett, I didn't realise he was at the game until I saw him. When I left, I met him in, I, I kind of bumped into him in Foundation Plaza as I was leaving. I didn't see him on the pitch. I was too busy doing other things. But it's tremendous to actually see him at the game. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? It's, it just it just shows that they're all aligned. I mean, there's, there's been a number of games in the league, just mundane, if there's such a thing as a mundane league game for Rangers, that James bisgrove has been at. You know, and it's nice to see these guys just pitching up at these games, particularly like seeing James Bisgrove at places like Peter Hill, which is... It's a junior game. There's no no special facilities for directors and all that sort of stuff. It's nice to see guys like that, you know, coming in, supporting the girls if you like. Because obviously they don't, they, they'll know they're there. I think that's it. Just shows that they're all aligned. They're all singing off the same handbook, you know. Until until that point, Theresa, I would fully expect. In fact, I'll be I'll be horrified if the cup isn't paraded down Ibrox on Saturday. Thank you very much. It was it yeah, was it last time, so it probably will be. I think it was yeah. against him, so yeah. Circle moments, eh? and I, <coughs> excuse me. I believe they did it last year, a uh, couple of years ago as well, didn't they? Or last year, so yeah, year I, I fully expect yeah. I fully expect the trophy will be paraded around Ibrox at half time. I very much would think so. Going forward, Laura, all the chat now has obviously moved on from if if it can be done, well, if it can be done still, um, this treble, um. We're in the semi-final against Celtic. We've got 
uh, the league one point ahead. It's, it's going to be a tough running, though, isn't it? Yeah, because every game is pretty much a cup final. Now. It's basically the best versus the best now until the, the end of the season. So I think because Joe and the rest of them have the same party line off one game at a time, but I think in the back of their, in the back of their minds and when they're having their wee meetings together and that and their friend groups, they'll definitely all be talking about the fact that they could be winning a treble. But I, I think that, as Joe's right when she does say that they need to just focus on one game, tick off all the games and then see where we are at the end of the season and hopefully it's where the three trophies, bus tours, lap honours, you name it, and they'll go down in history. There's absolutely no chance, there's no chance we're getting a bus tour. Absolutely none. Because so I haven't done it. With the men, do, they'll just have two buses and then they'll just both do it. So they, won't, they, won't the, they, won't, they won't give them, they haven't given them, I don't, the men's the only thing the men's ever paraded a trophy through the streets of Glasgow was a Cup Winners Cup in 72, that I'm aware of. So they can't see them doing it. Although it would be very nice. I don't see why they can't let us go up pace the road with both we, you know, all, all of them on top of a bus and you know, I mean just get Dougie Doug, get Dougie Park to get an, ex, an extended open top double deck and all the players, all the trophies, it'd be brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. It would be fantastic. It would bring the city to a standstill. It would be wonderful. <laughs> it very much would be. Uh Carr, are you fully on the that that bus? I mean, if I could be on the bus, I absolutely would be. <laughs> As in the travel. Carl will be driving the bus. Carl will be driving yeah, the bus. Yeah, probably. Are I'll be taking the tickets. I'll do whatever bus? you want. Get me on that bus. I'll be. I'll do anything. I'll shine your shoes. I'll do what you want. <laughs> no, I, I'm. I'm fully on board, but I'm still hesitant and a little bit reserved because of what happened last year. I'm still, yeah. but still in the back of my mind that there is the possibility that it could not happen. So I think. You know, obviously we've won that. We're the only team, you know, women's team in Scotland that can now go on and do that. Same with the men. So, you know, it's just about the players turning their focus back to Hibs. I mean, what a bit of a come down to go from winning the cup final to playing Hibs again for the third time in a month. But they're all games that you've got to win. So it's, I think this might give them motivation and kind of spur them on now. It kind of gives them that lift maybe from the last few weeks haven't been too great. So it gives them that lift to just go in and... You know, take every, as Laura says, take every game off and then we get to, you know, the end of April and we've got the Scottish Cup semi-final and regroup see where we, are at, where, where we are then. But we've got an international break coming up in our two weeks, 7th of April, I think. Mm -hmm. So we've got a couple of games and then a week break randomly and then back to it. So hopefully it gives everybody just a chance to settle down a bit, get back into the swing of the league, have a wee break, and then we just kick on then, because it is really Sunday, Wednesday, Sunday, Wednesday from that point on. So it really is full throttle. And as Laura says, every game's a cup final now. So swings are roundabouts. You never know what could happen. But, you know, at this moment, I'm saying I, but you never know. We'll see where we are come the end of the season. Absolutely. And Paul, <laughs> uh, it probably would be the Wenger bus if, if both teams have got a big bus. <laughs> it certainly would be. <laughs> but finally, Wolf, just to recap the the final um it was a uh, it was an expected sort of result wasn't it rangers would have too much the wide players would make a difference um and rangers would have too much that was pretty much everybody's sort of thoughts wasn't it yeah the game the game went the way that you would expect it to go i mean rangers full full time professional outfit against part time Patrick Thistle, who to be to be fair have done ridiculously well the last two seasons given they only got into the premiership in the first place because for former I can't even say it. Four for farming can stop being a thing. That's what got Thistle in. As the guy behind me was telling somebody yesterday, I completely forgotten about that. That's how Thistle got into the league in the first place. And they've done ridiculously well considering where you know where they are and what what they've, what they've been doing. Um, the final went exactly. Well, it didn't go exactly to plan. We didn't expect them to pull it back to one one when we took the lead. We thought we maybe that that would maybe be that. But uh, yeah, Thistle Thistle made the game with it. Fair play to them. They, they hung in second half. Um, they didn't go Cavalier gung ho, which they could have. They could have done. Maybe, maybe a lot of people like me expected them to do that and get absolutely royally slaughtered, which would have done nobody any good. So, yeah, end of the day, it's a cup final. The only thing that matters in any cup tie, in any cup tie, in any game of football, is winning the cup tie. Uh, Rangers did what did what I wanted them to do yesterday. At the end of the game, they were waving a shiny thing at us, and that always makes for a good day. So. Yep, all around a very good weekend. Absolutely. 
and Laura, um, we obviously play Hibs next. <laughs> <laughs> become it's almost become like a permanent fixture on the on the calendar every month. Uh, well, certainly in the recent weeks we've played this will be the third time. So um it's it's almost as though you get to know the opponent too much sometimes, but fully expecting a win. Yeah, I don't know what we're gonna do when there's a month when we're not playing Hibs to be honest. I think I might miss <laughs> But yeah, I think it, it does kind of read that familiar familiar that or easy for me to say, you know what I mean. <laughs> It's been a long weekend, um, but I think it's one of them that, as Joe keeps kind of saying, they look for the strengths and weaknesses, and there's probably other weaknesses they can exploit. It's the difference is we're back at Broadwood, so it's our kind of home ground where we're used to, and we do quite well there, so we should be absolutely fine. And we've managed to stick quite a few goals past Hibs the past month anyway, so I don't think there'll be too many concerns, to be honest. It's just whether they are still feeling the effects of their celebrations out the, the, the weekend or no, but I think we'll be absolutely fine. Yeah. And, Carr, it's obviously another, there's another interesting fixture on Sunday. Cel- Glasgow City hosts Celtic. Um, oh. Huge, oh. huge fixture in the league table because, obviously, uh, if I just double-check, there's a point between the three of us. We're on 60. Celtic and Glasgow sitting on 59, so something's got to give in that game. Um, a draw would be ideal, wouldn't it? I mean, a draw would be perfect. I forgot about that game, to be honest. I completely forgot they were playing each other, so that's quite a nice surprise. I mean, a draw would be ideal. Glasgow City have improved in recent weeks, so, I mean, it could go either way, but, you know, as long as we win our game, I'm not really caring, but a, a draw would be the kind of perfect scenario for us, and it kind of gives us a bit more of a, a gap there. We go on and win our game, you know, against Hibs, it's fine, but... It is, there's going to be swings and roundabouts and twists and turns. This, you know, the split always does that after last season. We know that, so we've just got to win every game and you know try and keep everyone else at bay, and we'll be all right. But it makes an nervy finish, I suppose. But that's what you want for the neutrals, isn't it? Like the cup final was, you know, it must have been a hell of a final for people to watch that you know maybe weren't invested in either team because it was like you know four pretty good goals, three of them. It's, especially pretty spectacular so gets more eyes on the game and hopefully that then translates back into the league and we get more people at Broadwood on Sunday you know traveling around the country to watch the women's teams and as long as we're waving another two shiny things at the end of the season I'm not caring. Absolutely absolutely and lastly Wolf um, a good weekend travels on um, it's, it's, it's there for the players if they want it isn't it? It is, and hopefully, as Carl says, it's going to be exciting. I mean, it's a title. It's a title. We're now both the men's and women's sides are both in title races. Now, the men's, the coverage of the men's game will take care of itself because that's already mapped out. But hopefully, the the powers that be, you know, do it properly and actually get more eyes on the on the. I mean, that the fact that that game yesterday, that cafe race was on Sky, was brilliant because it was Sky's main game, main game at that time yesterday. It was a good game of football, as we see. Nobody got slaughtered. It wasn't. Six, seven, eight, nine, one. Which people would just go, they turn it off about four, about five. So it was a great spectacle. Um, must have been great for neutrals to watch. People aren't really that interested. I mean, I've got a pal of mine, a big Rangers fan, not really interested in the women's game. He just can't can't get. But he watched it because it's a Rangers team in a cup final, and he said he really, really enjoyed it. You know what I mean? So more people like that, great. So hopefully, as the title race hots up, they put, they get more eyes on the game. Not 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 always people going to games. It'd be great if they could. The scheduling's a bit depending on what you're doing. I mean, like for, like for this weekend for myself, obviously, Ibrox on Saturday, it's kind of justified going to Broadwood on Sunday. I can, but will she wear it is, a, is another story. Similar for yourself, given the distance you've got to travel. You know what I mean? But it's whether they can make games, not not even just our games, but like City, Celtic, game, whatever, make them accessible. I have I had no idea City were playing Celtic. I don't, I'm don't. i assuming it's on the telly. It'll probably be on BBC Alba, but I'm yeah. guessing that because I know that's where they screen these things. For people that don't, you know, they need to promote it a bit more. And what better time to do when you've got a title race with three teams a point between them? They should be saying to folk, look, on Sunday you can watch... I mean, I don't know what time does Glasgow City Celtic kick off on Sunday? Uh, Is it four? Ten past four. Ten, ten past, past four. four. So they should be battering on it. Look, what you can watch Rangers Hibs at two o'clock. You can then watch, you know, the second, the second and third place team play each other. The, the league should be hammering that at people. They should, it should be all over the social medias, you know, where you can watch these games, how you can get access to them. 
you can go to one of them, or if you can't get to the games for whatever reason, you can watch them. They need to do that. That will get more eyes on the game because it is going to be a title race. There is going to be, you know, it's going to ebb and flow. It's not, you'll, you'll possibly find, I mean, I hope, I hope cars right, we win every game now at the end of the season and we stay top all the way through. But you might find that we we, we dip into second, possibly third if we draw, if we draw the other two, one or whatever. And then, come, you know, it's, it's pro, it's potentially a more exciting title race than the men's title race, you know, depending on how the next few weeks go, and they need to market it like that because they did a great job with that cup final yesterday. For all for all we said about Hearts and the ridiculous statement, great venue for it. The the fan zone they put on was really good. The entertainment was was real, you know, was really good. What I really liked at the end of the game yesterday was the fact that they interviewed the manager and they interviewed um, Rui on the pitch that the folk in the stadium could hear it. I thought that was fantastic. That was really, really good. You know? And so they're, do, they're doing lots and lots of things right. But they're still not telling people where they can watch the games. They're not, they should be hammering, they should be hammering that at you. It should be, it should be, if it's on the BBC, if it's on any BBC channel, BBC should be battering that at people saying, look, BBC Sports Scotland or BBC Alba or whatever, it should be on the sources, it should be on the, it should be on all the program breaks, all that, just to get eyes on it. Because if they're serious about making this, making this a thing, nearly five thousand folk at that game yesterday for two clubs from the west coast in an east coast stadium is a tremendous effort, absolutely tremendous effort. So let's let's get eight thousand at it next year, assuming that we are obviously back in it because we'll take the most support. You know, I mean, it's it's not lost on me that there was more folk there yesterday with two teams from Glasgow than there was last De- 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 December 2022 when it was us and a team from Edinburgh. You know what I mean? So they're doing something right. Mm-hmm. You know what I mean? So let's just hope that they promote it a bit more because the title race is going to go the whole way, but we are going to win it without any question. Let's... And I know you're very conscious that the, the main pod, the phone in pod's coming on. I know you're very conscious of that, so <laughs> I'll just be quiet now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yes, but yeah, we, we play Hibs on Sunday at 2 o'clock. And it's all, all over the BBC, so I believe are online one of those options. Um, thanks for joining us, folks. This has been the Cup Final uh, review uh, reaction. Uh, I'm glad that Wolf, Laura and Carr were all okay to join us today. Obviously, it was a celebration yesterday. So I being believe t- something... Being, players... t- being teetotal, Brian, I was always going to be, but having watched Laura and Carr's videos from last night, I wasn't convinced they'd both make it. <laughs> well, no, yeah, that's we, what I was... We wanting. did not have a drop of alcohol. Well, not a single no, about... it's just high on life. Good stuff. Good Exhaustion, stuff. I think, as well. Well, that as well. <laughs> well, thanks for joining us, folks. That has been, as I say, the, the reaction to the, the League Cup final win of Rangers 4, Park Thistle 1. Hang around. In 10 minutes' time, the main pod will be doing a phone-in. So if you want to get your points across, get in touch with the guys. It'll be a interesting phone-in, obviously, with... In the international break, so it'll be probably a, a, a bit of an open book, but I believe the host will just be uh, letting anything go. Thanks for joining us. We'll hopefully, we'll be back next Monday to react to the Rangers Hibs game, and we shall see you next week. <laughs>